Hey folks, we're back again. Today we're going to talk about Stop the Bleed on TACMED TV. Hey folks, Steve here with TACMED TV and today we're going to talk about Stop the Bleed. Our good friend Jim Williams has come back for another video. So you, <laughs> so you know it's going to be a good one. You want to stick around for this. So anyway, um, Jim, tell us, tell us what we've got here. Okay, well, uh, what we're doing today is we're going to be unboxing and uh, talking about a uh, kit for doing Stop the Bleed classes. And uh, if you don't know about it, Stop the Bleed, and you've done a video about it uh, a few weeks back, uh, Stop the Bleed is a, a White House initiative that uh, they put together several years ago. They kind of got off to a really slow start. It kind of was an unsung kind of a thing. Yeah. Nobody heard about it. And then the past year, year and a half, it is, it's really exploded. Uh, the, uh, the intent is to teach people what to do with life or anything. Of course, there are so many people that have, uh, yeah, that have no first aid training. And then you've got uh, you've got another group of people out there that you know maybe through industry maybe their employer they've actually taken a first aid class, <coughs> but those of us that have been through or teach first aid classes know that they teach hey direct pressure and call nine one one, and the the unspoken thing is the the unspoken secret is that direct pressure don't always work, uh, especially when we get into stuff. Uh, like you've got an amputation, you've got really bad cuts, gunshot wounds, whatever. So uh, I think a part of the resurgence of the interest in it obviously is active shooter. Uh, letting people know that they can help, what they can do to help, and kind of putting the onus back on them to be the real first responders to get the stuff done. Uh, I was thinking about this the other day. You know, when you think about the amount of time and money we have put into things like AED deployment in airports and movie theaters and schools and, and what have you, yeah. I mean, at the time, I'm, I'm a prophet of it too. I think it's a great idea yeah. and it does make a difference in the right communities, the right settings, uh, but we put a lot of money uh, to buy a lot of expensive equipment to, to intervene in something that's a reversible cause of death, and that's, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But Stop the Bleed, has a little bit different focus. This is preventing uh, the possibility of death. And there are two different things. I mean, it, it almost just popped in my head, like I said, a day or two ago, I was kind of thinking, you know, they, they seem like they're the same thing, but they're different. Uh, somebody you're using an AED on or fielding your CPR skills, that's a person that's already died and for whatever reason, a lifetime of hamburgers, uh, stress, whatever. And, and, and that's okay, and we'll do our best to help them. But if you're an EMS, you know the majority of our cardiac arrest patients are older, and we already know the outcome, unfortunately, unless everything falls in place right. Yes. The patient population you're going to see this getting used on uh, is going to be younger people that maybe they're in a setting, like a school, where they are exposed to an active shooter, marathon runners that are exposed to an IED, uh, that have a lot of life threatening injuries. Uh, but even day-to-day, one-on-one interactions. Uh, you're outside cutting limbs off a tree with your steel chainsaw and uh, it slips and your wife's the only other person there to help you or you're the only person there to help you. So getting this information out and also the help that they can provide uh, with this training is basically based on zero equipment except hands and ripping off your shirt, yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Uh, and then all the better we can throw in some bonus points if we throw into the mix uh, tourniquets or hemostatic clotting agents that are that are pre-applied to uh, packing material and things like that. So it just depends on how far you want to go budget-wise, uh, from zero dollars up to 30, 50 bucks, uh, and then at 30, 50 bucks you're at the Cadillac instead of buying a $1,500 AED. So anyway. You know, it, it kind of, th this campaign kind of reminds me of one of the things that really got uh, EMS going in the civilian world is, you know, I remember always being taught <clears throat> when I was going through EMT class, and we even talked about a little bit in paramedic class, is that the injuries that they saw during the Vietnam War were uh, people were dying from massive exsanguination, you know, massive bleeding. That's treatable. And 
that was kind of the, the push that got civilian EMS rolling in the early 70s, okay? So this is, to me, it's hard for me to believe that it took this long for it to come out. It came to us, you know, it created, basically created the industry that we work in and that a lot of you guys work in. And now it's just, we're just now starting to trickle this out to the, uh, the rest of the world, the rest of the country. So it's, it's kind of a long time coming and I'm glad to see it's here. Um, and I'm just like Jim in this. I think, you know, you need to go out, you need to learn CPR, you need to learn how to use an AED, you need to familiarize yourself in your workplace where there's an AED if there is one. Uh, if there's not, talk to, your, talk to your bosses about getting one. But at the same time, this to me is something, and, and I may be committing a cardinal sin here, but I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think this is more important. I think it's more important. There's more, there's going to be more possibility in your life to use the training that you'll get from a stop the bleed class than there is from a, a CPR class, okay? That's just 25 years of EMS talking to you, okay? I've done stop, you know, stop the bleeding on people a whole lot more than I've done yep. uh, cardiac arrests, okay? So this is a skill that you're gonna carry with you. Doesn't matter what type of job you do in the world, if you take this course, you're going to learn these skills and you're going to carry that with you everywhere you go. If you're at home, you're going to have this skill set. If you're traveling with your family, you're going to have this skill set. It doesn't matter where you are. So anyway, Jim was kind enough today. We got a couple of these bleeding control kits in. Um, we're going to go through it with you guys and just show you what comes in it. And uh, we're going to show you how it shows up when, it, when, when you get it from the UPS guy or the FedEx guy or whoever, whoever drops it to you. Uh, but we'll go ahead and we'll crack this open right now. Well, and, and first of all, when it comes, let me step off for a second. <laughs> Ignore all the noise. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, I don't know if it picked boxes, up the noise. Boxes and everything flying yeah. everywhere. All right, so oh my gosh. when it comes, it's in a cardboard <coughs> box, and uh, it's wrapped in this to protect it against the elements. And when you're, because, because the you know, pelican case isn't enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one thing I would recommend, though, is uh, uh, writing on this, this is a toy, and giving it to a family. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no uh, do not do yes. that, please. Uh, but save the plastic over wrap because, and throw it in the case because you're going to be able to use it as a garbage bag, or you might put it down when you're actually doing a class if you're using fluids uh, to keep your work area uh, nice and fresh. Yeah. So, so you know, I, I'm a big uh, reduce, reuse, recycle dude. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I totally agree. Too with bad that. I'm not wearing a hemp bracelet. Or anything. Right. Exactly. So, so you got that. Let's uh, let's keep that around. <laughs> we'll just know. drop it there. It's yeah. good. We'll keep it's that good around. Good to go. So Pelican case, like I said, incredibly durable, but keep the plastic bag. One thing that I noticed when I opened this thing up that I caught myself before we we busted it because yeah. uh, Steve walked in right after I got them and they were sitting in the office They're like, "What's this?" <laughs> and when, he was like, "All right, let me open this." Uh, this case, uh, this particular model. Uh, it's got little releases built into the latch, and I did the same thing. I walked up to it like a regular Pelican case yeah. and grabbed and started trying to rip, and I was like, this thing's got a lock on it. Uh, not really a key lock, but it has a little push button. Push it in and then pull the latch up. But make sure you do that so you don't break the box, and then every time you do a clash, you're mad at yourself because you're reminded. Right. Right, so thank you, Vanna. You're welcome, Pat. Okay, so we've opened it up. Uh, the like Steve said, the uh, FedEx or uh, UPS, their uh, their transport specialists have digitally oscillated the contents of this and, and analogically, and, and, analogically, yes. Uh, <laughs> but they have <laughs> trouble the contents. Yeah. So, uh, the, the, but they the do stuff, good work. The stuff is everywhere. We're going to talk in a little bit about keeping that from happening with your day to day going class to class. Yeah. Uh, but. When you open it up, there's a couple <coughs> of cardboard boxes that the contents were in at the factory before the, the shipper got a hold of it and shook it like crazy. Uh, yeah, and yeah. now they're all over here. Yeah, and we've got some, but that's some okay. close ups. We'll show you that. that. But inside this kit, there's a, a few different things. First of all, you have an assortment of training cat tourniquets, which Steve has done a video on. So if you want to go back and do a refresher for that, put a card up in the in the uh, YouTube cards here over Jim's head, and it actually may end up looking like a headband on him. I don't know. All right, so we'll see. Uh, so if you want a refresher on the cat tourniquet, boom, there you go. 
Uh, so you've got an assortment of those for your class. I think there should be five in here. Yep. So we'll just dump three, those in there. Four. That's just four? Yeah. Or no, that's five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. I'm, yeah. He works the map. Yes, All I right. do. There's also a Ziploc baggie of gloves. Yay! Yay! I don't, I think they're nitrile. I don't know. That's a concern for you if you're teaching class. Uh, I'm pretty sure these are nitrile, but make sure you're packing uh, with nitrile. Uh, some other stuff in here. You've got Simulant, a moulage trainer for quick clot combat guys. And this is the Z fold uh, that's got the pretend pat, uh, impregnated with uh, hemostatic agent for doing and teaching wound packing. Uh, so we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So you've got several packages of that. The thing that worries me about this and where we're going to have to be looking for some grant money is replacing these. Uh, I would also consider maybe having a Ziploc baggie uh, where you can put these things in after they've opened up to keep them kind of together. So you might be able to get a little bit of reuse out of them uh, before you have to endure the pain of purchase. And there's eight of those in there. I just counted them up. Right. Eight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Has he ever lied to you? <laughs> All right. Not intentionally. Yeah. Uh, also, you've got several different student books. Uh, well, they're the same, but several copies of the student books for the uh, Stop the Bleed course that you can order extras and you can hand them out to people. Uh, you don't have to. Uh, you could also just hand them out to the students and take them back up after if you are in a cost-cutting mode. Uh, <coughs> that gives you basically the, the Stop the Bleed course. Uh, it's a lot of graphics, graphic intensive, which is awesome, uh, especially depending, you don't have to worry too much about the, the educational level of the person you're teaching. Again, don't be just thinking about teaching this for uh, EMS or tactical guys or whatever. I know we're a tactical channel, uh, but uh, yeah, when you're going in, be teaching this to factories, be teaching this to school kids, you know, elementary school. Uh, they can know this stuff, all right? And then just exactly what he was saying there, if you're a parent watching this channel, it doesn't really matter how old your kids are, as long as they can understand and comprehend the language that you're speaking, teach them this stuff. Okay? Yeah. They need to know it. Not, not because of school or anything like that. It's because what if they're the ones home and you get hurt and you need help? Then they can help you. And you can make a game out of it with your kids too. You know, there was a, there was a viral video. Well, there was a viral video that was running this. around that um, a dad and um, he had a tourniquet, he's got his camera, he walks up to his daughter's door, knocks on the door, pushes it open, throws the tourniquet to his, his looks like a maybe a seven, eight year old daughter, and says, okay, I'm, I'm hurt, I'm, I'm, I'm hurt, I need, I need help. And she immediately goes into putting that tourniquet on. Okay, work with your kids like that, do those little drills, it's fun for them, it's actually fun for you, it's good training for everybody take an opportunity and do that. I hadn't thought of that. That's an excellent idea. I mean, if you're an everyday carry kind of person uh, and, yeah. and you have to deploy, if you get hurt after the person's done the hurting and they walk off, yeah, if you're with family, they're going to be the ones there to help you and you may not be conscious to where you can tell them. So that's an awesome idea. Uh, the other two pieces that are in here are giant Vienna sausages. Giant Vienna sausages, yes indeed. Yep. Uh, these are uh, their training limbs to use in the skill stations. Stoppably, uh, during the lecture, there are two breakout sessions for skills. One is practicing tourniquet use, and one practices uh, the use of the, uh, the wound packing with, uh, with the hemostatic dressing, or any kind of dressing. Okay. Let me help you Let's with that. pull that off there. No, okay. sir. So, uh, these mannequins, they have a couple of, each of them have a couple of different problems on them. There is a, uh, like an entrance gunshot wound that has a cavity underneath it that you can pack. Uh, and it's also, you can get in there and you can feel bone, so you've got something to push against when you're doing the packing. <coughs> There's also a stab wound. And again, likewise, you get in there, and it could be a stab. It could also be like uh, shrapnel from an IED or something like that. So this cavity. Giant paper cut. Giant, huge paper cut. So you've got the cavity, not only goes in, but also it kind of tunnels. And we could have gotten through a professionally done video if it weren't for, yeah, yeah. A, you're, the, the part of yeah. Jim Williams today played by <laughs> Steve Carpenter. Okay, so anyway, uh, so you got a stab wound that you can practice your wound packing. The other limb that you still haven't unpacked yet, 
No, Wait. it's got one too, right here. They've got the same three wounds on each one. Uh, I thought there were just two on that. Okay, yeah. I just learned something. Uh, you've also got a, Another a laceration or a, a stellate shaped wound. Ooh, good, good work. work, nursing ed. Okay, so, uh, well, actually, you can learn that in medic class, but uh, Thank you. as well, it, you go down to bone, and it's pretty deep, and uh, it's all over the place in there. Yeah. So, uh, use these in your skill stations for practicing both tourniquet application, and then also the big one, the new one, uh, is your wound packing. Don't forget, too, uh, the latest revisions of all the EMS curriculums. Yep. If you're an emergency medical responder, an EMT, or a paramedic, this is now part of the curriculum. So yeah. if you haven't been through wound packing or you think it's not in your scope, it is in your scope. Start teaching it, start learning how to do it, start teaching your coworkers. I know we're, we're preaching to the choir yeah. uh, in most cases, but if you haven't, if you stumbled across this video and you've never heard of wound packing before, again, just so <laughs> happens that I've got a video on wound packing, I'll put it in a card right over Jim Williams' head. And it's gone. Okay, so <laughs> that's awesome. All right, so uh, you've got two of these, so you can do your breakout stations. Normally, they want to limit uh, the the class to eight students per instructor. Uh, once you've gone through the provider course, if you're an EMT, a paramedic, physician, nurse, etc., you can start teaching this, which is awesome. Uh, there's a lot less bureaucratic stuff uh, behind the scenes to become a stop the bleed instructor. Uh, also, students in those realms can also be co-instructors. They can't teach the class by themselves, uh, but they can be assistants to kind of expand your scope or your, I'm sorry, span of control so you can add some more students if you need some help, uh, which we're looking at partnering with some different schools to, to do just that so we can uh, get this out to some bigger audiences at the same time. <coughs> yep. All right. Well, that's just awesome. So, I, it's, it's, yeah. So that that's the kit. That's what you get yeah. if you purchase one of these puppies, which they're uh, just a, a this much south of a thousand bucks, yeah. uh, which is a problem. However, go for grants. Uh, hit up local organizations, host, local hospital, the ED. Uh, do you have a local chapter of the nurses association? They're nurses. They got tons of money. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, but uh, a lot of different avenues, you know, church groups, uh, you know, get with a school board and say, hey, I'll do this class for you for X number of times, for X number of students, if you pony up the money to buy me a kit yeah. or buy yourself a kit and I'll come and do it for you and borrow the thing. A lot of different ways you can work it out where it doesn't have to come out of your pocket. All right. Well, the thing, and, and you hit on something there that, that tells me that they're extremely serious about this campaign is the fact that once some a, a healthcare professional, EMT, paramedic, nurse, physician, PA, uh, nurse practitioner, whatever, takes the course, they can start teaching the course. And there's no bureaucratic red tape to go through. That means they're serious about getting this out here, okay? They're not doing this for money. Yeah, I mean, if they were, then they would be charging $25 for a card, and you'd have to sit through an instructor course and all that stuff. They're wanting to get this information out to people. And I totally agree. You know, you've heard me say it in the previous video. You've heard me say it some today. This is something you need to learn, okay? I don't care what walk of life you're in, you need to learn this skill set, okay? You need to know how to do this. This will save lives. You know, you've heard me talk about, and we've talked about before, there's the, the three major, major killers in trauma. Number one is massive hemorrhage, bleeding. Okay, that's the number one killer in trauma. This is an opportunity to learn how to stop bleeding from the extremities. Okay, now of course torso stuff, that's a to totally different totally different realm. But this is stuff that is going to save lives, plain and simple. Yep. The, uh, yes, yeah, so the, with this stuff, that's the kit. And uh, there are some ways that you can tweak it uh, for, for local. We're going to talk about a little bit of that uh, right now, yeah, actually. Let's do go it. grab that thing. I'm going to step off camera for just a second. It's going to go down to the basement. <laughs> Far! <laughs> Near. So, what I would recommend a couple, three different things. One thing I like about this, you can teach the class without a drop of simulated body fluids, okay, which is a good thing because you don't have to worry about cleanup and the mess and everything else. I like realism. 
uh, but at the same time, the doing the realism adds to your time. So depending on the group, uh, I would consider sometimes you give people just the, the dry version, literally, yeah. uh, where you've got some pretend blood, uh, and that's behind me off camera. I'm not going to go get it, uh, but the, uh, oh. the, the patches. We don't need patches. We don't need no stinking patches. patches. Uh, Actually, I'm gonna go get those. I knew he would. He's gonna circle around behind me. Uh, <laughs> so, the uh, so you can do a dry version. You could also do a wet version uh, if your audience demands it. Uh, for example, I would do this for more your professional people, law enforcement, uh, EMS, fire. Uh, this is not your scroll, sir. Yes, scroll. The writ of common wisdom. Yes. Uh, Another manufacturer has a product out there uh, that are like basically plastic pools of blood. Oh, my nose is bleeding. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you can lay this beside your pretend victims or underneath these. Uh, it looks like a steak for Bugs Money. It does kind uh, of. All right, so let <laughs> me color that on the other side just for a joke. Okay, so put in a bone. Uh, but you can put that put that underneath those uh, those fake limbs. Uh, but so that's that again keeps it dry, but adds a little bit more realism to it. Uh, you could also maybe consider taking you an IV bag, an administration set, some food coloring, and then uh, lay that down along the limb to add some actual fluid going through there. A bunch of different things that you can play with uh, to go. But anyway, so that's one thing you might add to it. Another thing, we've got a. Uh, several different sizes of uh, Rubbermaid container that you can put in there to help organize and keep all that stuff from flopping around when you're transporting. But also you might consider adding some different things to your contents. Again, gloves. Uh, once you run out, make sure you've got some nitrile ones. Uh, tactical black. <laughs> also, you can add standard bandaging material. There's no requirement that everybody in the world runs out and buys a hemostatic agent. Uh, and the cost of that is an issue uh, that you have to consider. A lot of organizations aren't going to go that way. That's fine. You can still do wound packing without, uh, and it's still going to have a good effect. So keep that in mind. You might also use your locally available bandaging materials. You've got like multi-trauma dressings, which again, aren't necessarily the, the focus of the stop the bleed. You can't wound pack with this. Uh, but it might be nice to have it around as a as you're talking to your audience about different options for bandaging. Uh, maybe after you've packed, you can finish with this over the wound packing uh, to soften up some of that extra blood. Absolutely. Uh, also, the, again, different sizes. You've got ABD or four by fours, those kinds of things. I like having them in there if no other reason, just to tell people, hey, these are nice for day to day stuff. Do not pull this out when somebody's been shot in a femur because you're wasting your time. Don't just lay it over and say, good to go. Uh, because, you can't see that. It's out of shot. It's out of shot. Okay. Uh, but anyway, the. Uh, you can just lay it on the humerus. <laughs> oh, I feel better now. And call it good to go because yeah. it's not. So, you know, having those so they know what you're talking about. Uh, I've got an Asherman chest seal in there just in case during class. If you accidentally say something about chest wounds and somebody asks, you can use that as a demo or do a sidebar with them during a break or something. Uh, and then some fluffy stuff, uh, some Curlex for wound packing or dressing, uh, as well as different sizes of gauze. We've got some six, some four, and some two inch in there uh, as well. And before the advent of the, uh, the hemostatic agents, that's what I used to wound pack. Okay, that's the, when you see the video, the wound packing video that I, we talked about earlier, that's what I'm using. I'm using just a, a, a roller gauze, and, and it works fine. And that's what we do pretty much day to day as well. I mean, we carry hemostatics in our, in our armor uh, if you're on tactical run, but on the truck, if you're making a run, uh, you're probably not going to, unless you, your service is really bought into it, yeah. that's a big expense to have sitting around on a truck. So. Because that stuff does expire. Um, and that's why it's it, it can be viewed as cost prohibitive sometimes because it is rather expensive. I think you're looking the minimum to get into that is like 50 bucks a pack, um, and it does expire after yeah 50 bucks ish, um, and it could be higher, it might be a little bit lower, but it does expire. So that's something if you're not using it that you have to replace. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, I've got some Coban in there, some Ace, an Ace Wrap. Uh, just there's always some Yahoo that'll say, "Oh, well, what about an Ace Wrap? They you brighten it up real tight and around an ankle, and it pinched off blood flow." Yeah, it's elastic. It's not going to do what a tourniquet does. So you might use that right. to explain the differences. But it's good to use for a compression bandage. Yeah. After you put the tourniquet on, you've done any wound packing you need to do, and now you're in the the bandaging phase of dealing with this wound, treating this wound. Then yeah, use them. You can use an Ace Wrap. I, I use them daily on the, on the truck. Also got a, uh, a, a real cat so you can show people and maybe even it leads to a discussion about knockoffs. You know, if somebody asks you what the cost of a cat is and you tell them and they almost have a stroke and during class when they get on the net and say, well I found one of them for three uh, dollars, you can explain to them, yeah, don't be doing that. There's a difference and that's there's some other videos out there uh, right now talking about the fake tourniquets. Um, Probably in the near future we'll do one on that. that that'll be something I'll bring Jim Williams in because I'll, I'll need some help with that. Um, but there are problems, there are fake ones out there. Make sure that you buy um, a recognized, reputable brand of tourniquet, okay? You're looking at CAT, Soft T, the Soft T Wide from TACMED Solutions. You're looking at the MAT. Um, you want to stick to those tourniquets that have been proven and have actually had the scientific testing done on them. And the Stop the Bleed program in the class materials, one of the PowerPoint slides includes a picture and it talks about the, the approval process the military has gone through recognizing right. CAT as well as the soft T and also the EMT, which I've never even played. I've never even heard of that. Uh, not saying it's good or bad, yeah. it just it hadn't hit us and so that, that was a, a that was something I learned in the class, yeah. just seeing a picture of that animal exist. So whatever's going to be the most predominant in your uh, in your area, uh, you know, look it up and be aware of, of it and the availability. Yeah. Uh, also, maybe throw in some aluminum foil blankets to remind people, you know, there's some other stuff to do yeah. with treatment-wise. You know, these, these would be good additions to a public access kit. Uh, you can look on the web, a bunch of people are selling the... The, the boxes to mount right by an AED that have several pre-made IFACs for the public uh, to, uh, to use as well and, and that would be a good addition while you're waiting on help. And then the ubiquitous da, 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 da. Sharpie. I'm not going to kneel down for the 57 cards of, of yeah. Steve talking about having Sharpies on you. Yeah. But, uh, I've yeah, talked about it ad nauseum. You folks this, know that by now. I would have an assortment of these maybe that are dried up and don't work. Yeah, if you can find one of those, throw it in the kit. That way it can remind you, hey, you need to write on there at the time. You know, the public isn't going to have a Sharpie, probably. They'll have a ballpoint pen in an office or something. Uh, but, you know, have something that doesn't have ink uh, that's dried up. That way it, somebody can <coughs> pick it up and accidentally start writing on your equipment and then jack it up. Uh, the other thing is, and probably somebody in the class is going to say, hey, if we have to improvise a turkey, can you use this for a windlass? I know. Because <laughs> it will break. Okay, it won't get the job done. It will break, uh, and that'll be something we'll do in a tourniquet video. We'll do an improvised with a sharpie, and we'll destroy a sharpie on you. Um, yeah, that's fine. I don't care as long as we get the information out to them. I'm all good with it. That'd be another good addition. Is you know some common household or office items that you could use as a windlass. Yeah. Uh, something a piece of metal that's stout enough that it would take the pressures of, of winding if you didn't improvise one. But again, that's going to lengthen the length of your class. Yeah. The estimated class for a stop the bleed course is just a right at an hour, uh, which is another advantage. You got to hum through the slides and the stations though to get it there. Uh, but when you're going into industry, when you're going into office or you know business settings, if they do get your foot in the door, uh, they want it to be pretty quick so that uh, they can get their workers back. So you don't want to make enemies. Uh, yeah, and you want to be mindful of the amount of time that they're giving you to get them some training. So you know if you're promising them a certain amount of time, try to keep it right on that amount so that you can come back later and hit them again. And also when they're sharing stories about when they one factory dude talks to a dude in another factory, uh, he tells them, man, they told us an hour. It only took us an hour. You know, it was our lunch break. Everybody ate while they were taking the class. Uh, something like that. They don't go out and tell their friend, don't call this dude. It was a four-hour trauma class. Uh, right. you know, remember, you're not making trauma surgeons. You're just wanting some lay people. The focus is lay people, how to stop bleeding. 
although changing this around just a little bit, the same equipment, it's awesome as a reinforcing tool for your law enforcement, your tactical guys, the patrol guys, fire, and even EMS. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 definitely. But anyway, well, that's, I guess that's, we've covered pretty much what we wanted to cover today, right? All right. Well, folks, that's the video. Um, Thank you, Jim, for coming by. As always, always enjoy having you on the channel. Yes, sir. You know you've got a home here. Anytime you want to come and, and shoot video with me, man, I'm, I'm glad to have you. You're my brother. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you got something out of it today. I hope we've encouraged you to go out and seek out a Stop the Bleak class uh, in your area. Please do that. I think it's very important, and I think you'll be glad with yourself after you've done it. Okay. So with that being well, said, and oh, I'm sorry, sorry go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Interrupting the tagline. More information about Stop the Bleed, go to bleedingcontrol.org. Uh, we're not affiliated with it in any way. Uh, it's American yeah. College of Surgeons, uh, Committee on Trauma, uh, NAEMT, uh, who am I forgetting? Uh, the Hartford Consensus, and there's somebody else in that mix that, that created the stuff. But uh, yeah, look at that. And then also, if you don't want to, or you're having trouble finding information, or you want some tips, or you just got a question that sounds flaky, hit Steve up on the comments section. Yep. Uh, I'll check it out as well. You yep. can address stuff to either of us. Yep. We'll be glad to, to give you ideas or, or, or anything that's worked for you uh, that with this stuff tell, that we haven't addressed, tell us and all the other people that are watching and reading in the comments section so we can all learn from it. Yep. And with that being said, since he pretty much finished my tagline out, <laughs> I'll put a link to the stopthebleed.org in my description box below. Please go check that out. And folks, I guess we'll put the uh, probably put the subscribe button here somewhere in the middle, and I'll sprinkle some videos around. And thank you for your time. My name is Steve with TechMed TV saying stay safe.